Hello everyone! Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Mambalot's Math Tutorial. Last time, we had discussed the different kinds of patterns and sequences. This time, we will be focusing on the most simple sequence, which is what we call the arithmetic sequence. What is an arithmetic sequence? It is a sequence whose terms has a common difference, which is denoted by a variable d. For example, we have the sequence 3, 7, 11, 15, 19, and so on. So as you can see, we have to add 4 to each of every term to get the next term. So the common difference here is 4. Number 2, we have 12, 4, negative 4, negative 12, negative 20, and so on. So from here, we can see that we subtracted 8 from the first term to get the second term. And then, subtract again 8 from 4 to get negative 4, and so on. So, therefore, the common difference is negative 8. The third example is we have 1 third, 2 thirds, 1, 4 thirds, and so on. If you can see, we are adding 1 third to each of the term to get to the next term. So, therefore, D is equal to 1 third. The last one is we have the square root of 3, 2 square root of 3, 4 square root of 3, 6 square root of 3, and so on. So from this, we can see that we are adding 2 square root of 3 to every term to get the next term. So the common difference here is 2 square root of 3. Now we have the end term of an arithmetic sequence. Or previously, we have referred this one as the general term of our pattern. Example number 1. Find the next two terms of the sequence 3, 7, 11, 15, 19, blank, and blank. So from this, we can see that the common difference of this sequence is 4. So therefore, we add 19 plus 4, so we get 23, and then add another 4, so you have 27. But how about if we have example 2? Find the 63rd term of the same sequence. So it would be a burden to add 63 times to get the 63rd term. So we will now derive the general term of the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. From the sequence, we know that its common difference is 4. And from here, we can see that the first term is equal to 3. The second term is equal to 7, which is actually equal to 3 plus 4, in which 3, if you observe, is our first term, and then 4 is our common difference. So therefore, we can express the second term as first term plus the common difference. We proceed to the third term. What is an arithmetic sequence? It is a sequence whose terms has a common difference. 3 plus 4 plus 4. So notice that we had already add 2 fours, which means that we add 2 common difference or 2D. So the third term can be expressed as first term plus 2D. The next one is the fourth term. A sub 4 is equal to 15, which is equal to 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. So there are already 3 fours. So we add 3 fours, which are the common difference. So therefore, the fourth term can be expressed as A sub 1 plus 3D. The fifth term is equal to 19, and then it can be expressed as 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. So there are already 4 fours that are added, so therefore the fifth term can be expressed as a sub 1 plus 4d. Notice that the number of the common difference added to the first term is just 1 less than to the subscript of that term. So, we can express 
the n term of an arithmetic sequence as a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus m minus 1 times b. Now let's go back to our example 2. Find the 63rd term of the sequence 3, 7, 11, 15, 19, and so on. So we'll just substitute the first term, which is 3, the common difference, which is 4, and n, which is 63, since we are finding the 63rd term, to the general term of our arithmetic sequence. So we have here a sub n is equal to a sub 63, which represents the 63rd term, is equal to a sub 1, which is equal to 3, plus n here is 63, so we have 63 minus 1 times the common difference, which is 4. So solving of an arithmetic sequence as a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus 62. Then we multiply 62 times 4, so we have 248. And add 3 plus 248, so we get 251. So 251 is the 63rd term of the given sequence. Another example. Given 8, 2, negative 4, negative 10, negative 16, find a sub 24. Or it is the 24th term. So again, we just have to substitute the different givens to our nth term of the arithmetic sequence. So the first term there is 8. The common difference is negative 6. And n is equal to 24. So that would be e sub 24 is equal to the first term, which is 8, plus... Our n is 24, so you have 24 minus 1 times the common difference, which is negative 6. So, subtract 24 minus 1, that would be equal to 23. So, just copy the rest, and then multiply 23 times negative 6, so that would be negative 138. So, we add 8 plus negative 138 so we have now 130 so the 24th term of that sequence is 130 now let us proceed to the arithmetic means an arithmetic mean is a term inserted between the two terms of an arithmetic sequence for example Insert three arithmetic means between 4 and 32. So this can be viewed out as 4 and 32 on both sides, and then we have three terms inserted between them. So what is the most important thing that we need to know so that we can insert the different terms? So that would be the common difference. But how do we get the common difference? We can solve the common difference from the nth term of the arithmetic sequence. So from here, to solve for d, we will subtract a sub 1 on both sides so that we can remove a sub 1 from the right side. So we can cancel out now a sub 1. So what's left on the right side is just n minus 1 times d. So, to solve for d, we need to divide both sides by n minus 1. So, that we can cancel out n minus 1. And what's left now is d. So, therefore, the formula of our common difference would be d is equal to a sub n minus a sub 1 divided by... Now, we can solve example 5 by using the derived formula of our common difference. We have here, the first term is equal to 4, the fifth term is equal to 32, since 32 will become the fifth term after inserting three arithmetic means. And of course, n is equal to 5, since we have already 5 terms. So we will substitute this now to the formula of our d, 
So that becomes 32 minus 4 divided by 5 minus 1. So subtract both the numerators and denominators so we can have 28 over 4. So dividing 4 from 28, so we get now 7. So, 7 would be the common difference of our arithmetic sequence. So, therefore, the second term would be 4 plus 7. So, that is now 11. Add another 7. So, that becomes 18. Plus 7 again. So, you have 25. So, the three arithmetic means between 4 and 32 are 11, 18, and 25. Another example is, insert two arithmetic means between 43 and 16. So using again the formula of our common difference, from here we can have the first term is 43, the fourth term is 16, since 16 would become the fourth term after inserting two arithmetic means, and our n is equal to 4. So substitute to the formula we have now, 16 minus 43 divided by 4 minus 1. So subtracting both the numerator and the denominator, we can have now negative 27 divided by 3, which is equal to negative 9. So we need to add negative 9 to the terms to get the arithmetic means. So 43 plus negative 9, we have 34. Add another negative 9, so we get 25. So the two arithmetic means between 43 and 16 are 34 and 25. Let us proceed to the arithmetic series. An arithmetic series is the sum of the terms of the arithmetic sequence. So for example, if we have the sequence, so the arithmetic series is just adding all the terms from that sequence, which is represented here by the variable s. But how do we derive the formula of the sum of the arithmetic series? We will derive the formula of the arithmetic series by telling you the story of a famous mathematician. We have here the secret of Carl. Carl Friedrich Gauss is known as the prince of mathematics. Did you know that during his elementary years, he is already very genius, especially in the field of mathematics. Once upon a time, his teacher asked him to sum up the numbers from 1 up to 100. To his teacher amusement, Carl just did it in seconds. So how did Carl did this? Now we can solve example 5 by using the derived formula of our common difference. We will derive the formula of the arithmetic series. So, if we can recall, 101 is actually equal to 1 plus 100. And 50 is coming from 100 divided by 2. Because he divided the numbers into two equal parts. So, 1 and 100 are actually the first term and the last term. And 100 also, which is the blue one, is equal to the number of n or the number of terms to be added. So, a sub 4 is equal to 15, which is equal to a sub n, where n is the number of terms to be added, a sub 1 is the first term, and a sub n is the last term. Example 6. Find the sum of all even integers from 1 up to 80. We have here the first term which is equal to 2 because 1 is not an even integer. 
Then a sub n is equal to 80 because 80 is an even integer. And n is equal to 40 by just dividing 80 to 2 since we are only counting the even integers. But if you are not sure in finding the value of n, you can always use the formula of the n term of the arithmetic sequence by using a value of t which is equal to 2 since all even integers has a common difference of 2. So substituting these values to our formula, we have now a sub n is equal to 80, so which is equal to the first term which is 2, plus n minus 1 which is our unknown, times the common difference d which is 2. So we have 80 equals 2, plus we distribute 2 to n minus 1, so that becomes... 2n minus 2. Observe that we can cancel out 2 since we have a positive and a negative. So what's left now is 80 is equal to 2n. So to solve for n, we divide both sides by 2. Therefore, n is equal to 40. Now we have to find the sum of these even integers. Now we can find the sum of these integers by using the formula of our arithmetic series. So just substitute this value star formula, we have now S sub 40 is equal to 40 over 2 times 2 plus 80. So dividing 40 divided by 2, so we get now 20 times adding 2 plus 80, so that is 82. Then we multiply 20 and 82, so we get now 1,640. Therefore, the sum of all even integers from 1 up to 80 is 1,640. How about if we have this example? Find the sum up to 20 terms of the arithmetic sequence 3, 9, 15, 21, and so on. We know that n here is equal to 20 since we are adding 20 terms. Our first term is 3, but we don't know what is our last term. Therefore, we cannot use the formula that we had derived before because we don't know what is a sub n. But we know that a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d because that is the formula of the n term of the arithmetic sequence. So, we will substitute this formula to a sub n. So, we have now s sub n is equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So, this one, which is circled in green, is actually our a sub n. So, from that, We can combine a sub 1. So that becomes now 2a sub 1. Therefore, the formula now of our arithmetic series, if a sub n is known, is s sub n is equal to n over 2 times 2a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So we can now solve example number 6. So we have n is equal to 20 a sub 1 is equal to 3, and d here is equal to 6. So, substituting to our formula, we have s sub 20 is equal to 20 over 2 times 2 times 3 plus 20 minus 1 times 6. So, dividing 20 divided by 2, so we have now 10. Multiplying 2 times 3, we have 6 plus 20 minus 1, that would be now 19, times 6. Then, we have 10 times 6, plus multiplying 19 times 6, that is 104. And then adding 6 plus 104, we have 110. And multiplying 10 times 110, so we get 1,100. Therefore, 
the sum up to 20 terms of the arithmetic sequence 3, 9, 15, 21, and so on is 1,100. Now it's your turn to answer your module. I hope you get something useful on what we have discussed today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much at your service, Mam Balot.